Hey everybody, I've uh, been here from Visual Dev FM back to walk you through uh, something new that I've been working on. I tweeted about this a little bit, uh, but about a year ago I made this job uh, board starter in Webflow, um, and I'll put the link in the notes for this video, so if you want to go look at this you can. It's clonable, but it's just a basic job board. Let's see if we can take a look at the whole site here. You know, where you can have job listings and um, you know this all works with the Webflow CMS so try not to style it too much try to keep it really basic so that way if somebody wanted to clone it style it up do with it what they would they could you know all of the items in the CMS and available there right um, but I worked on a project not long ago with somebody where they were trying to pull content from Airtable and make it display on the canvas and Webflow. And we've, been, we've seen people do this a lot, um, uh, or try to do this a lot, do it a lot of different ways. A lot of times, syncing behind the scenes, you know, using Zapier or Parabola and moving content into Webflow, which is still a really great way to do it. Um, but, you know, those you have to have scheduled flows or you have to run those as your data changes. And so, uh, FinSuite. Uh, built a tool that lets you sync on a timer, but of course Airtable's got to be open. So, you know, if you're trying to figure out like how can I pull data that's that's just you know in Airtable. Well, the problem is when we make API calls, uh, you know, in a Webflow site, there we don't have a back end to hide them in, right? If I put code into my page into my site, anytime you know I, I make an API call on the front end people are going to be able to see my API key. I need that to get data. So people can view source, they could take that API key, they could make calls, do damage to my account. But it makes this really hard. And I've seen people tackle this a few ways. You know, one is to make an Airtable base, share that Airtable base with a dummy account, and then, you know, let that dummy account have only read read only access and then use that API key. And you're using a key, but still, you know, uh, it, it shouldn't be, be damaging, still not great. Um, and then there's also the Airtable API limit that you could run afoul of if you have a lot of traffic. And so as I was puzzling out how to approach this, I came back across uh, No Code API. Now, No Code API is a tool I've known about for a little while, but um, it's something that I, you know, haven't hadn't used in a bit. And what it does is allows you, I can put my Airtable um, API key in here. I can then, you know, make an Airtable API endpoint just by clicking the button. Um, and, you know, it's gonna say, give it a name. I put in my API, a, API key and it's gonna create another endpoint for me. But I can use this API and I can say, you know, what table name I wanna get. And I can choose parameters for fields, ID, view, per page, you know. I can see the response, I can get a code, I can see code snippets here that I can use, which is really cool. Um, so this actually gives me, you know, uh, a start on this, which is really great. Um, and this is actually not far off of what we're actually gonna do. I, I did not use their snippet, but it's there to use. But essentially what this does, it gives me an API endpoint that I can put in my code. And then what's really cool about it is I can secure this endpoint. So this lets me say, these are the only domains that are allowed to use this endpoint. So if somebody were to copy that API key, put it in their site, it would not work. Um, and this is a recent addition, which makes me really excited. I really love using this. And so you can see I have this job board starter Airtable base here. Um, and this is you know all of my data that I'll be using. And if I jump back over to my other browser, we can get rid of what I built before so we don't need this or this or this. Now we have a site that looks similar, but this is actually data that's being pulled from Airtable. And if I refresh the page, you can see we get this loading animation and then boom, everything loads right in. And if I wanted to add a new job, I could just jump back over to my Airtable base and we could add you know, Ben's test job. Um, and since you know I work at Webflow, uh, let's go ahead and use Webflow. We can choose you know a category. Um, you know we'll just pick one here, design, um, and we'll just copy from uh, 
this field and this field just so we have some dummy data. Not that we're using this here, but we could, and then you know, we can choose the link, whatever. Um, and so now we have another job listing. And if we were to go back over to the site and we were to refresh and scroll all the way down, it might take a second here uh, for it to show up. We'll see that it'll eventually show up here. We're going to come back to this. It'll say, okay, well, why is it instant? Why isn't it instant um, if you just added it? Well, one thing that one thing I did mention, like if we were to use the Airtable API in that endpoint, um, there are rate limits. Well, one thing that, that no code API does um, is that they cache this data for you. So they make the call, they cache the data, and then now when you're using requests, um, it's, it's a cached version of that for a while. So you'll see it might take, you know, five to ten minutes um, for your data to get refreshed and for your, uh, for your new listings to show up. But you can see here now I've got Ben's test job, um, you know, for flow full time. And then I've got an apply now button to that link that we used. And all I did was, you know, add it here in Airtable. Pretty fun. So how did we do it? Um, well, I initially started working here in, uh, if you don't use code sandbox and you write code, you are missing out. So I initially wrote my code here, uh, just playing around. Um, but I'm going to jump over to Visual Studio Code to show you what I did. Um, so this is the code that made this happen. Um, and I can show you this in the project too. In fact, it does set right here, uh, here. But in order to give a better view, it's kind of hard to see this all here. Um, I figured we'd look at it here. So essentially what it looks like is, is uh, walking through how to do this. And this is the hardest part. So uh, when I say uh, we're doing this, this is not easy. <laughs> and if you're not familiar with JavaScript or you're not comfortable playing with code, then this might be more difficult to, to approach. But essentially we're doing a couple of things. So first things first is we're saying, hey, we're setting a variable. So, you know, constant uh, listing. And we're saying it's document get element by ID listing. And if we look in here, we do have a container and its ID is listing. So it's pretty easy. And then basically we're saying when the document's ready, um, we're going to go ahead and fetch. And we'll say, you know, if the response is not okay, we're going to throw an error. We have a custom response uh, that we provided here that we put together. And then, you know, else we're going to return the JSON. So when we make the call, we put in our no code API, uh, you know, uh, URL, that endpoint that no code, no code API gave us, you know, back over here. And so, um, and then we put then handle errors. So this means if we do have an error, it's going to skip all of this and jump all the way down to this catch function. And what is this does is it's this puts our error on screen on the page so people can see that yes there was an error there's a problem. Um, but let's talk about what all this code means and, and how this works. So basically we're saying then you know the data so the data that comes back from here uh, the response data records for each for each one of these records in the air table we're going to do all of this and this looks really overwhelming but it's really pretty easy if you've played with code so essentially what we're doing is we're trying to recreate all of this structure in um, JavaScript and where did this come from so if, I, if I'm gonna have my listings I need something that I can use uh, so I went to a style my style guide in fact I think I actually did this in components I scroll down here yep I have it right here so this is this is that element that gets written to the page that you can see right here right um, so I have a test element and there's an easy way to grab this structure what I did what I do a lot is if we you know view the live site and we right click on this element and we inspect we can say just grab this posting wrapper we can right click it and copy, copy the element, and it copies all the HTML for this and everything in it, right? So that's what we did. And I posted it over here um, in this. So this is what the HTML structure looks like. So now we have to recreate this in JavaScript. So essentially we're saying, okay, we need a div with a class posting wrapper. So let's do that. Let's, you know, we're gonna let our variable posting equal document dot create element. So we're just creating a div. Um, and then that's, you know, 
posting, and then we're saying posting set attribute class posting wrapper. So we can say this is a div with a class of posting wrapper. And then right here, we're saying, uh, you know, uh, listing, which was back up here, when we said this was our container with the ID of listing, we're going to append the child posting. So we've essentially put this div in that container. And then we just have to work our way down. We need post, like, you know, if we look at this next one, we need a post content wrapper because that's how I set this up. And so post content wrapper. So, you know, let, uh, let post content equal, you know, document create element div. And then we're going to post content set attribute class post content wrapper. And then now we're going to get the posting that we created before and we're going to append child post content. So we're putting this post content wrapper inside of this div. So this is all we're doing. And the, I'm not going to go through all of this, obviously, but this is just me creating items over and over and over again, setting attributes. You can see here, you can set class. And for images, the source, um, you know, alt, um, uh, the loading, all that fun stuff. And in fact, we're getting the uh, some of this data from the fields. So record.fields, company logo, um, we're using company name. Um, we're setting the text content. So this comes all, so basically all we're doing is, and this is the hard part where I'm not gonna be able to walk you through everything and maybe uh, in an upcoming video, we'll create something in Webflow and then live code create the content so you can kind of see what that's like. But we created that. Um, and then basically what it's gonna do is for every record it finds, so for everything in the Airtable database, for every one of these, it's gonna go through this. It's just gonna loop through them all and it's gonna do this for every one of them. So it's gonna create an item and then put it on the page. And then remember we said uh, this skips to an error and that jumps all the way down here. We've used the same same piece here where basically we're saying, you know, we're gonna put a, a wrapper in the div and we're going to, you know, put the error that pops up. So basically I made a custom error that shows the status. Um, you know, if it's like 400, 401, maybe unauthorized or, or whatever. And then uh, it will, tell you why and then you can put a custom because uh, you know you can see job listings cannot be loaded you can customize that a little bit so mine's two lines um, and then finally at the very end after all of that it's going to remove whether it was an error or whether it loaded the items it's going to remove the loading element so you can see um, on my site on the home page we have um, this loading element preload it's called loading and essentially it's just here got an animation and this is to let people know that work is happening in the background right and so we pull this uh, off the page as soon as we get an error or as soon as we get the items loaded it just it's going to be removed uh, so that way we don't see it anymore but it stays while we're working through all of that so that's what this is and you can you know if i wanted to i should have done this while i was talking and explaining things but you know it's going to go off the order that's in here so if i want to order those things i can order them here um, you can create new views so you can have a view and filter it by day you can filter it by you know if people are paying and you know you've checked it approved only the approved ones um you know and if they're only supposed to be up by dates and you have dates in here when they're supposed to expire they remove from a view they're automatically going to expire and not not be available on the site anymore right so this is this is a, a pretty nice way to approach you know using Airtable as a back end to Webflow and this is really great when you have people who are maybe not as technically proficient but they're really comfortable using something like Airtable um, and so if you look at no code API and you say hey let's go to the marketplace and add an app they actually have a lot of apps available. So you can see there's a lot of different things that you can do here. Uh, if you are a Google Sheets person, hey, you can use Google Sheets uh, if you don't like uh, Airtable. Um, but there are quite a few options that are available all through here. Uh, note my disappointment that code is not here. Wah, wah, I wish it was. Um, but uh, this is, uh, I mean, just such a robust set of, of apps that are available. And once again, it makes it easy for you to put it in any no-code tool where maybe you can't hide those calls on the back end. Um, and so there is the expense of your time up front creating those elements in JavaScript. But once they're created, you know, now it's just as easy as editing an Airtable base that makes your life easy. If we want to change the design of these things, we literally can just jump into components, visually style it. So it's not like we can't style it visually. We're using all the same classes. 
no big deal as long as we don't change the HTML structure and if we do we can just change our code uh, one question that I might you might get is okay like these are apply now links that go out somewhere else what if you know we wanted a detail page well you could do that you could actually link these all to the same page and when you click you can set uh, a variable for our local storage or whatever for this this item and then you could use another endpoint to call and get item for get the content for just this one item and write it to the page or you could even use a modal have it pop up pop up a modal like product hunt display all the content so there's a lot of powerful ways to do that I plan on making a second video walking through that process um, but wanted to be able to kind of show the details of how did I accomplish this what was I using um, and what's great is only using Webflow and then no code API. That's it. I mean, uh, besides Airtable, right? You know, there's no Zapier Parabola scheduled runs. If I want to do things, I can just do them here. In fact, if we move this job around, let's come back here and refresh uh, and see if it's updated on the live site. Yeah, you can see now that this job is at the top of the list. Now that we put it at the top of the list here. So that's how it works. Um, and so if you're comfortable with JavaScript, this might be something you want to try. If you're trying to get around limits of items, um, and you can paginate too, right? So, um, and I'll do a video on that too, but you can limit this to X amount of items and then you could one click call the next page, call the next page, call the next page. So you can do that too. Uh, but if you're just trying to get um, away or maybe you run into limits with the API and um, you know, you, can, you can't add more items or maybe uh, just the way the schema works or the way, you know, a lot of times we work with clients or you work with people and they, they're like, I, it has to work out of this thing. It's got to be an Airtable or we just can't do it. Um, just wanted to show another way that you might be able to approach writing to the DOM with content. Um, and so hopefully you find this helpful. Um, once again, I know this isn't super approachable, but I did want to make a video to show people how I was doing it because I did... I did say I would do this, so I just wanted to walk through what this looked like, how we did it, and then I'm going to make this um, this clonable too, so I'll put a link in the description of this video so you can go clone this, and I'll also put a link to um, GitHub to the code as well. The code will be in the uh, in the base, um, but um, or in the in the project, but if we go to uh, you know, snippets here uh, on my GitHub uh, repository that I work out of, um, and we do the right items JS. You can see all the code that we used is here. So you could go steal this and just kind of break down and see what I did, how I did it, um, and then you know steal it, use it, make the most of it. But hopefully you all find this helpful and it's something uh, that you'll be able to use. So thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you all next time.